Good morning. It's wonderful to welcome you back to your church. It's the first time for a Wednesday morning service for me, and I've been here for what feels like ages. It feels as if our parish is slowly bursting back into life as we journey through Advent. So it's marvellous that we can have a return to Holy Communion here on a Wednesday. And I'd also like to welcome anyone who is still shielding and remaining at home. If it's right for you to do so, that is right. And so we'll continue to the best of our technical ability to live stream wherever we can. But please bear with us as we're not the BBC. We are, we are trying to get hang of the technology. So I welcome you this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you call us to repent of our sins, soften our proud and stubborn hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you declared the forgiveness of God. Teach us to forgive one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you search our hearts and show us the truth. Direct us in your way of righteousness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty God, Purify our hearts and minds, that when your Son, Jesus Christ, comes again as Judge and Saviour, we may be ready to receive him who is our Lord and our God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their hosts and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will fail it and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Be so. The response to the psalm is, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless, Bless the Lord, Lord O oh my soul. soul. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. 
He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. Bless the Lord, O my soul. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Please do have a seat. It's all kind of starting to feel a bit busy now, isn't it? We get to this point, we set off with lots of good intentions in Advent, to slow down, to reflect, to make space, and then their Christmas buzz creeps in. I was sitting with a passage and thinking, what can I share about this segment from Matthew's Gospel? Because short as it is, it has such depth. And then I remembered I'd lived this passage one Christmas time. In fact, it was the first Christmas after I was first ordained. So I was kind of getting used to having this collar on my neck and I was still working. And I was looking at my first Christmas as a deacon, looking forward to that. And the team rector said, do you know what, Leslie? You can preach on Christmas Day. I thought, wow, I can preach on Christmas Day. What can I say? How can I say it? How can I do it? I started knitting Christmas characters. I drew together this whole knitted nativity. I'd worked out my sermon in sound bites because that year we were looking to tweet segments of our sermons. It was all going on. So anyway, we get to the end of a busy term in school. We have all the carol services. We have the Christingle. We have the Christmas party for um, pensioners from across where I worked. And it got to Christmas Eve. And I'd even laminated little Christmas prayers with knitted Mary and Joseph on. And I just switched the laminator off. And I didn't feel quite right. I feel a bit strange. So I have a cup of tea and I'm saying to Richard, I don't feel too clever at all. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I had the, the lurgy that tends to hit schools just before you go off for Christmas. And I remember by midnight Christmas Eve feeling very sorry for myself and having a bit of a boo-hoo in bed because I'd planned all of this stuff 
and I was going to do all of these things, but I wouldn't be seeing anybody for 48 hours. And at some point over those two days, it was a dreadful year for that book. I remember saying, come on, God, you said your yoke is easy and your burden's light and I'm here. And I'm absolutely shattered. And I cried out into the silence, as you do. That year, my daughter made Christmas dinner, actually, and she was only a teenager. She did very well. And I share with you what came next, a real, a bit of, a, a bit of an epiphany, a bit of an eye-opener, in that God says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. However, we tend to take on the yokes of other people. We tend to create those yokes of our own. And the minute we, st we veer away from keeping our eye and our focus on Jesus, on receiving afresh at Christmas the light of the world, I think we can come unstuck. And that first Christmas as an ordained minister, I came unstuck. So the closer we get to Christmas, if you feel your knees start to creak, when they don't normally creak, or you're, you're struggling with certain things, do a little check. My yoke is easy, my burden is light, says the Lord. So if you're feeling as if you're starting to buckle, have a think. Have you placed too much expectation on yourself? Or are other people placing too much expectation upon you? And before we get carried away with our plans for Advent, Christmas, don't really want them to obscure the true reason for the season we want to keep our hearts fixed on Christ if we can and as I said at the beginning it feels as a parish we read throughout Advent that God will create streams in the desert we've been in a wilderness place you've been in a wilderness place here locked out of your sacred space and everything's just beginning to zing into life. So let's enjoy that and let's just listen to those words. It may be worth going back to them. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light and to be like him for he is gentle and humble of heart. Amen. to stand and say together the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, keep your church strong in the law of Christ, resisting the temptation 
to be influenced by the values of the world. May your people, in their generation, be truly children of wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have pity, we pray, on a world full of discontent, restless and finding no lasting satisfaction. Guide it into the right way for all those who desire good. We continue to give thanks for the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine which began yesterday. We give thanks for the hard work and dedication of those involved, the scientists, laboratory workers, those involved in distribution logistics and all health workers. And as our shops are now fully open for the first time for many months, we pray for all those working in the retail industry. As the future of many high street shops face an uncertain time, let us give hope and encouragement to those feeling anxious about their careers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy, we pray, on those whose lives are weary and whose burdens are heavy. May they come to know the freedom of trust in Jesus Christ. We pray for all who are weighed down with the burdens of life, those who are sitting in darkness and struggling to find your light and love at this time. We pray especially for those who we know who are sick or suffering, either at home, or in hospital, or in residential care. Praying by name for John Ellison, Jessica McCaskill, Carrie Waggett, Betty Connor, Doreen Moy, Andrew Garber, Mrs Hewitt, Sid Harrison, Derek and Pat Middleton, Dorothy Macbeth, Stella Matthews, Michael Hughes, Chris Haynes, Margaret Errington, Tom McKenzie, Julie, Josh, Mary Tilson, Pat Henshaw, John Pike, Matty Karienan, Melissa Shepherd, Anne Taylor, Rod Taylor, Sylvia, Carol Woodfield, Beatrice Yorston, Christine, and Jeanette, and in the silence of our hearts, any others in need of our prayers today. May the Holy Spirit restore their weary bodies and ease their troubled minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have been delivered from their mortal bodies. Now that the struggle of life is over, may you receive them into your eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Secure in the rest that Christ has given, we bring all our prayers and concerns to you and lay them at your feet. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a socially distant sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our time to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in the great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. And so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because you sent him to redeem us from sin and death and to make us inheritors of everlasting life. That when we, he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may with joy behold his appearing and in confidence may stand firm before him. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. 
Send the Holy Spirit on your people. Gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, that we, in the company of St. Simon, St. Paul, St. Peter, St. John, and all your saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be
let us pray. Father in heaven, who sent your Son to redeem the world, and will send him again to be our judge, give us grace so to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us forth. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So it's been really special to be here with you this morning as we return to worship in this place. Tomorrow our service will be from St John's. And that means all four of our churches will have returned to a regular pattern of public worship. And just a final word on the yoke that is easy and the burden that is light. It's been a long haul this year, so if you're feeling frustrated at things that have changed and things that can't be done and things that can't be fulfilled, and just not being able to do the things like we used to do in the way that we did. Remember, we're all in this together and we will figure this out together. So let's try and do it without placing too many burdens on others and ourselves. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those whom you love this day and always. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ.